Pedro's not the Scotch. Moon is bench. Hello everybody. Things have gotten worse for the team, which is something I just didn't expect. So last game week when I saw you, I was ranked at 3 million. We are now at 5 million, which bizarrely I'm feeling quite good about because at one point over this weekend I was 5.5 million. So we're going to take the wins where we can. But let's look at the team. Luckily, it was quite disastrous for a lot of managers out there. But not having Haaland was the final nail in the coffin for this team. I will definitely be wildcarding in game week six. I put together a wildcard for this upcoming game week, but it just doesn't make any sense. I want to go heavy on Arsenal and where they're playing against City. I'm not feeling too good about that. So we're going to stay with this team, hope that it goes out on a high, although the bar is very, very low. But last game week, I got 33 points. Now, considering I didn't have Haaland captaincy, I think I'm just lucky that I came away with an attacking return. The absolute shining light in this team last game week was Raya, the best decision I've made so far, and there aren't that many of them this season, so we're going to take this one as a huge pat on the back. He kept another clean sheet, he got one save point and two bonus points. It was absolutely massive result against Spurs, I was expecting far more than just a 1-0 finish. The other funny thing about this game as well was he was one save away from getting another save point, but at that point I was like, no, just get the clean sheet, let's not have any shots from Spurs, let's just keep it locked in. So a nine-pointer went such a long way for me this game week. The rest of the defence, I said last week, it was a bit of a disappointing week. It's gotten worse. We didn't get a single clean sheet from any of my defenders. Robinson came so close to keeping one. Unfortunately, Fulham did concede in the 95th minute. This is where I am pleased that I never check my team throughout the game week. And I'm glad that I wasn't watching the match or keeping up to date with anything because I would have absolutely crumbled <laughs> conceding so late on. Probably the biggest shock of the game week was the fact that Liverpool lost 1-0 to Nottingham Forest. I did hype up Forest's defence a lot last game week, but I wasn't expecting them to keep a clean sheet in this one. So Trent only came away with one point. Porro also lost his clean sheet, but this is one that I'm not going to beat myself up about too much. Would have been nice to have an attacking return from him, but it would have come at the detriment of losing Raya's clean sheet. So I'm going to take that nine-pointer nine and the assist from Saka and run with it. Then Mikolenko was not meant to be in my team. He came in because I brought in Jao Pedro and he wasn't even in the squad. So I went with four at the back, which is the first time I've done that this season. It was accidental, but Mikolenko didn't really make much difference either. He only played for 25 minutes. I'm also quite glad Everton did concede goals in that game. Otherwise I would have kicked myself for Mikolenko coming off so soon. And then the midfield, again, there's not too much to talk about. Rogers, another blank, getting frustrating, but with Villa's nice run coming up, hopefully we'll get something from him. Villa are also looking a lot more attacking, scoring three goals against Everton, and Ollie Watkins getting the brace. We will talk about him shortly. I took my captaincy off of Palmer at the last minute, and I spent the whole afternoon until the Chelsea game worrying about the fact that I didn't captain Palmer. Thankfully, I guess he did blank, and Chelsea came away with the win, so I was happy about that. But I would have... It would have been nice to have had the attacking returns from Palmer, but also frustrating that I hadn't captained him. So this is probably a nice way that things turned out. This game honestly just does such silly things with your mind, but it was a waste of energy worrying anyway, because he only came away with three points. And then Salah got his first blank of the season, four points in total from him. So far this season, I've only captained him for his two smallest returns, which hasn't been ideal, but I'm looking forward to bringing in Haaland on my wild card in game week six. And then I think I'm just gonna permanently have the captaincy on him and not really overthink it. And then Saka was the only player in my team to actually get a return. He got an assist, one clean sheet point and one bonus point. If you watch my vlog, you'll have seen that by the end of the game week, I was so desperate for any kind of return that I was shouting out to my neighbors that Saka had finally gotten a return, just completely lost my mind. And then up front, we have touched on Jao Pedro. He wasn't even in the squad. And ironically, I brought him in because I was going to the Bryson game and I wanted one of my FPL assets to be there in front of my very eyes. That did not happen. And it was one of those games where Bryson was really, really crying out for Jao Pedro. If he had been there, I think it would have been a completely different game. I think they would have come away with a win rather than a nil-nil draw. But these things happen. The most transferred in player of the game week, of course, he's not even going to appear. And then Isak had another blank and he's also flagged with an eye injury. So I think it may be coming to the end of the road with him. He's only scored 17 points this season. And to be honest, I was expecting him to get that in the first game week alone. I had very, very high hopes for Isak, but he's just not looking as sharp as he was last season. I'm also frustrated with keeping Isak because my original transfer plans were to take out Isak and bring in Watkins, who went on to score a brace this game week. So yeah, kicking myself over that one. And I've also taken out Chris Wood from my team, who is just my favourite FPL asset of all time. 
And then we've got Muniz, another blank, didn't even start, wasn't in the starting 11. Again, watch my vlog if you haven't already, because the disappointment when I saw those team sheets, it was not a good time. But we are going to try our best to make up some ground or at least get out of the top 5 million. I cannot believe that is my rank. This season is just going downhill. But we're going to get all of the bad luck out at the start of the season. And then from game week 10 onwards, we will fly up those ranks. So now I will discuss my team selection for the upcoming game week and potential transfers. So here it is how the team is lining up for game week five and I'm using the Fantasy Football Scout app to plan my transfers. I've made so many wildcard drafts on this app, it's getting ridiculous, but you will see some of those in the <laughs> upcoming team selection video. In goal, we have got Raya. Yes, Arsenal are playing Man City, it's not an easy fixture. Do I expect Haaland to score? Absolutely, probably a brace, probably a hat-trick. I'm not feeling great about it, but Raya has performed so well over the last couple of game weeks that I can take a hit with my keeper. Having a set and forget keeper has actually been quite uplifting this season. I haven't had to overthink who I'm starting and there's been some surprises already. For example, last week with Arsenal playing Spurs, I fully expected Spurs to score. It didn't happen. Nine pointer. Lovely. We're going to really focus on that this game week because that was the only positive from my team. But yeah, I really like the fact that I have spent five and a half million, but it, so far it's paying off. Then in the defence, at the moment, we are sticking with four in the back. So, so I'm going to keep hold of Robinson. He's got that real attacking threat. It's a Newcastle fixture, but it is a home fixture. And Newcastle at the moment aren't looking absolutely incredible. Maybe we will see some goals conceded in that one. But again, if we can get an assist or something from Robinson, that will be fine. And then Trent, I'm so excited about. He's only blanked once so far this season. And in the three fixtures where he kept clean sheets, he's managed to pick up 20 points in total. I am hoping for an attacking return from him soon. He's had 11 key passes and created three big chances already. So it is there. It's bubbling under. And maybe Bournemouth at home, that could be a fixture where we see him go absolutely massive. Then Poro, I keep reminding myself that I haven't gone for Poro for <laughs> the clean sheets. We're not going for a Spurs defender for clean sheet potential. We're going for the attacking returns. Brentford at home, again, another nice fixture. It'll be nice to see a bit more from Poro. Then Mikolenko, I am concerned about his minutes. I'm concerned about fitness. There's a lot of concerns around him. We can see he's currently flagged on the app. But Leicester away, I think it's a no-brainer to just go for it and, and hope that he'll start, he'll stay on and keep a clean sheet. Then in the midfield, we have got Rodgers, mostly because I don't have a backup. Look at the state of that bench, it's just not going well, is it? But it'll be nice to see something from him. Wolves at home, lovely fixture. And now we've got Ollie Watkins in his stride, maybe Rodgers can provide some assists to him. Palmer, vice-captaincy is on him at the moment. I do think West Ham away will be a fairly tricky fixture for Chelsea, but I do see us definitely scoring. But I don't think we're going to see a massive haul like we did against Wolves. Salah, the captaincy is on him. We will come back to him shortly. And then Saka, City away. If anyone's going to score, it's going to be Saka. Then up front, we've got Isak, who I've got a bit of a red flag over. And then João Pedro, who was in training this game week. He didn't play in the midweek fixture, but I'm taking that as he's well rested and then he'll be playing against Forest. But we saw Forest defensively very strong, but it's a home fixture coming off the back of a nil-nil draw. So there could be the potential there for João Pedro to return with a bang. In terms of transfers, one of many mistakes I've made so far this season is not focusing on the immediate fires that needed to be put out. This game week, I thought that the only fire that I was really going to have was Muniz. He didn't start in last game week, he's played in the midweek and I think his spot in starting 11 is gone unless he massively manages to turn it round when he comes on. Jimenez did score last game week so he's probably the one to target now and I'm also, I'm trying not to regret too many things this season but not going for Emil Smith Rowe is one of those ones where I'm like, what could have been? But anyway, the fire was going to be Muniz. But now Isak is flagged and we have got question marks over João Pedro but I think he'll be fine. So I've got the option of either taking out Isak or Muniz. Now, if I transfer out Muniz, I'll have 8 million in the bank. The first person that sprung to mind, and this is also probably a recency bias, but is Mateta. I can bring him in for 7.4 million. He ended my season on such a high last year, so I've got really fond memories of having him on my team. He did have three consecutive blanks this season, but he got a brace against Leicester. Also, the caveat, it was against Leicester, so we're not expecting that every game week. He also took Palace's penalty. We all thought Eze was going to be the one that was on penalties, but it's been confirmed that Eze and Mateta will be sharing them. And also last game week, I was saying that Eze was one of those players that I had real kind of fear of missing out over, whereas now Mateta would fit quite nicely into that front three, and then I've got that Palace coverage. And then another forward option that I have been eyeing up, but it does feel like a bit of a backward step because he was in my team at the start of the season. 
but it's Solanke. Now Solanke was one that I basically ripped my team apart to get him in for game week one. I thought he was going to have an absolutely explosive start at Spurs. Unfortunately, he went out injured. But since coming back, he managed to play the full 90 last game week. And I just, I really like him as a player. I think he's a proven asset. I think he's going to do really, really well at Spurs. And I don't want to miss out. Their upcoming fixtures are Brentford and Manchester United. Then they go on to Brighton and West Ham. So it's quite a nice run. But do I need him? I'm not sure. Or maybe I need to see him perform and start getting returns, get that confidence up, and then I'll bring him in. So maybe this is one where patience is key. And then there is the option of transferring out Isak instead. And I think this one won't come as a surprise. We are thinking of bringing in Ollie Watkins. That He was such a good asset for me last season. I had him right from the start, basically kept him, apart from a weird brief period where I took out Watkins for Tony, which didn't go well. But I just, I absolutely adore him. And he's finally managed to get an attacking return. I wonder if this is where we now see him getting more into the swing of things. He did look quite rusty prior to this. And I think he was quite unlucky not to get more returns. But last season, it's key to remember that he didn't actually return until game week five. And then he went on to be the highest scoring player in the game. He's converted 20% of his shots so far this season, which is already ahead of where he was last season. So if he can match the performance we saw, then I think he's a great asset to go for. I didn't bring him in last game week because I was worried about his early substitution. He came off around 60 minutes, but last game week he played 83 minutes and he scored two goals. So I think he is much more, I don't want to use the term nailed. I've been listening to a lot of Planet FPL and James hates the term nailed. So I'm not going to use that word, but I think there's more promise that he will get more minutes in. The upcoming fixture against Wolves is a really nice one to target as well. Wolves have conceded the second most goals of all teams this season. I will say that they have had not the easiest fixture run. They did play Chelsea and got absolutely annihilated by them. They had Arsenal in the opening game week. But I think it's one that Villa will score in and hopefully with some involvement from Rodgers. Following that, they go on to play Ipswich, Manchester United, Fulham and Bournemouth. So I think I can bring him in and just secure him as a long-term transfer into my team. If I'm wildcarding, he will definitely be coming in anyway. So maybe I just get ahead of the curve. He's already the most transferred in player for the upcoming game week. So I think I want to get him in before we have too many price rises. Because my team value at the moment is not looking good, guys. And then we've got captaincy. Now, City are playing Arsenal this game week. But I just think Haaland's fixture-proof. His ownership's around 70% and I would probably captain him if I owned him, to be honest. His form has just been so good. And whilst Arsenal's defensive form has been incredible, they're going to concede. They did manage to prevent Haaland from scoring last season. But Haaland wasn't looking quite as good as he is this season. So... I think it's going to be the North London derby that we expected with goals everywhere. I think we're going to have that this game week for the Arsenal City fixture. So my next best player, considering I don't, well, not even my next best player, I don't have him. My best player for captaincy is definitely Salah this game week. Where I've been building my wild card, I'm trying to build a team without Salah, but bring in a Liverpool asset. But Salah is just top of the charts for everything. He ranks top for shots, shots in the box, shots on target out of all the Liverpool players. And he's also really secure for minutes, unlike others. And there's been some touchy issues around that with people coming off at 59 minutes versus 60 minutes. But Salah's just a really, really reliable asset to go for. I know he did blank last game week, but it's a nice home fixture. Bournemouth conceded five goals this season and they've conceded 39 shots in the box. So I think Salah is the way to go for this one. Part of me was thinking maybe I could captain Ollie Watkins. Wolves have conceded over twice the amount of goals that Bournemouth have conceded. So it was a tempting one to go for. But I think when we look at form, Salah is just looking so, so sharp in comparison to Watkins. So I think this is the team I'm going to go for. And I'm relatively happy. We'll wildcard next week. So this feels like a nice goodbye. Hopefully we'll see some points. But if I have another game week where a team with Salah, Palmer, Saka and Watkins doesn't do well, I'm just going to have to completely rethink everything about the wildcard. <laughs> just go from some out there picks no I won't I'm gonna play it safe safe and boring but that's it for this video please let me know in the comments below how you got on last game week I'm very intrigued to know whether other people had disasters like I did or if you were more successful than I was with my team don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and I'll see you in the next video bye guys